Welcome to lesson one. I'm Richie from Marmalade, and I'm gonna talk about understanding Etsy SEO today. But first, it would only be fitting if I talked about why it matters. So, to help me with that, I have some illustrations I've drawn up here on this whiteboard. Number one, why should we care about search and Etsy SEO in the first place? Well, on just about every website you go to now, um, aside from maybe, well, actually even a lot of blogs and other type of reading type content websites, right? Even within the website, search is front and center, right? eBay, Amazon, Etsy, Google, Google's all search, right? Inbox, I don't know about you, but I don't typically go through my inbox and Gmail and stuff like that um, and just read you know, what's on the list, right? I'm normally searching for what I'm looking for. So search, it's pretty much where everyone starts. In fact, raise your hand if you know somebody who thinks the entire internet is just search, that you just search for things. I know that at Marmalade, based on Google Analytics, that a lot of people type in Marmalade as the search and then click to get to marmalade.com, okay? People do this with a lot of websites. I observe it, I see it. Uh, it's one of the ways we get there. Instead of just typing it in .com, we search there. Anyway, so that's why that's really important. Well, questions we get, what about social media and referrals? Yeah, that's important too. But when you're starting out, and that's this little pie chart right here. When you're starting out, no one knows who you are. Uh, so you don't have a lot of people that can make referrals because you don't have a lot of sales. You don't have a lot of customers and you need customers to have referrals. And social, well, people aren't really sharing your stuff because they don't know you. People share brands that they know about uh, because that's, those are the brands they care about you. They have to know you to care about you. So again, when you're new, you're gonna get very little referral and social. That's something you have to build. So where are your sales and where's your traffic coming from? Well, it's coming from search because you have solutions to their problems. Uh, so search, huge. All right, but then a little bit later on, right? once you become more established, you can start building these up. You can start encouraging people to share on social media. You can start encouraging customers to send you referral customers. Search is still gonna be huge. This is where you're getting all the new ones. But the point is that search helps feed these. So it's not an island over here that, you know, well, if you do this, you don't have to worry about those, or that I'm saying these aren't important. No, they all work together. All right, another thing I hear is, what's the point of focusing on it? Etsy's constantly changing their algorithm. Algorithms are complicated and scary. Um, well, that's a good point. Fortunately, you don't have to worry about that. Um, you don't have to worry about weird looking code and stuff like that. Uh, Etsy will keep changing things, but guess what? They get paid when you make sales. So it's in their interest to bring you sales, to help customers find the best product. And it's really only, only your job not to understand how they come up with the ranking and everything. It's just to apply what you know about it uh, and do it better than the competition. In fact, there's a little parable I ran into years ago and I'd like to share it with you and it's about outrunning the competition. Um, here I have a super scruffy lion. This thing looks terrifying as you can tell. Um, it's not your normal run of the mill lion. This thing is, it's scruffy, right? You come across this thing, you know it's hungry. Here are two people, they're hanging out um, in the safari or something like that, right? All right, uh, well, they're hanging out, they come across a lion and this guy's thinking, oh man, we're, we're done for, right? This lion's gonna eat us. Well, this guy has some super fast shoes on and he's saying, no, no, I'm good. I don't have to outrun that lion. I just have to outrun you, right? Well, he's busy eating you, I'm gonna be long gone. So this guy, he's upset. Um, his shoes are slow. His shoes are slow. This guy, he's happy. His shoes are fast. He's got those orange marmalade shoes on. So basically, Etsy's the lion. Don't try to outrun the lion. Just outrun your competition. Okay? It's so much easier than trying to figure everything out. The gains you're going to get from spending all your time trying to figure out exactly what they're doing isn't really worth it, right? Because you have other things to focus on aside from just search. I know that too. So. Focus on, you know, put some time and effort into getting your Etsy SEO so you can get found in search, but don't make it take up all your time. So be smart with it. All right, but this is a lesson on understanding Etsy SEO. So we better talk about that as well. I've made a single page sheet. So understanding Etsy SEO in a single page. 
single page is a new thing I'm trying out. I'm hoping people like it uh, because it kind of condenses everything down into something you can print and keep as a reference and look at it. So when you're like, hey, what did he say about that? You don't have to go back through the video. You can just look at the single page. So let's talk about some of the things on this. So number one, listing titles. Putting your keyword at the front of the listing title. So when I say in the front, I really do mean the front. If your listing is about boho headband, I want to see boho headband in the very front of your title, not four or five words in, at the very front. If that's what you're targeting, that's where it needs to be. And I have some examples on here too. Tags, we get this question a lot. Does tag order matter? No, tag order does not matter. It matters if it exists as a tag. So make sure that the keyword you're targeting exists as a tag and it's in the front of your title. Third, declumping. All right, so Etsy is going to put space between the different listings in your shop. Let's say your shop has uh, the top, the best 50 listings for SEO um, for the entire search of Boho Headband. You would expect you would dominate them, and the first 50 listings the customers would see is just your shop. That's not how it works because they don't want the whole keyword or the whole you know Etsy marketplace to be dominated by a couple shops that are just really good at this. So what they do, we call this declumping, I think they might refer to it as declumping also, but they basically they spread those listings out. So here you are, you're a rock star with your Etsy SEO, and then there's 40 some listings in between and then you pop up again. And this way, Etsy maintains this nice boutique feel with a lot of different options and variety. They like that. So Basically, you know, no matter how good your Etsy SEO is, you're not going to have a whole bunch of listings on one page. They defend against that. How else do you do that when you have, you know, at the time of this recording, it's something like 1.7 million sellers. That's a lot. Um, also, you know, you're going to want to make sure that you spread these out anyway, right? You don't want just 50 listings for that one keyword. You want to spread them out because everybody is not coming for just one keyword, right? You're not getting all of this, all of this from just one keyword. So spread them out because there's lots of different shoppers looking for different problems uh, that all looking for solutions that your shop can provide. And because of declumping, past the first three to five pages, most shop most shoppers aren't going to be going past that anyway. So, you know, if, if you're putting 12, 15, 30, 100 of these listings against one keyword, they're not going to see it. Uh, because only so many are going to go past those pages. So don't compete with yourself. Don't keep you know, knocking this listing up uh, for the other listing and doing all this weird shuffle. Uh, and I've got a nice little example here. It's a lot easier than me trying to fumble through it uh, <laughs> just with spoken words. So definitely take a look at that too. We've got good strategy, bad strategy. All right, number four, recency. <clears throat> recency means how recent was this listing listed or renewed. So if you sell it and renew it, if it's a brand new listing, if you listed it, hasn't sold, uh, but you can still hit that renew, that renew, the one that costs money. Yes. Okay. People are saying, oh, but it costs money. It does. Um, but that's kind of, maybe Etsy looks at that as a kind of a commitment then, right? Like you're willing to spend some money to renew this. We know that your shop still has a pulse. This listing has a pulse and they give that a bump. Okay, it's not the most important, obviously, because you know they have to know how to find you in the search first, and that's the most important. Uh, but it is also important. They don't want to show listings that have been sitting stagnant because if all of a sudden a shop lists something and it sits out there for two months, and then you know Etsy keeps putting it at the top, someone buys it, and then that shop is like, oh wait a minute, I didn't even know I had that out there anymore. It's been months and no one bought it. Um, and then the customer has a bad time because the shop doesn't have it and all that stuff. Now, granted, I'm expecting that if you're watching this, that's not something that would happen to you, right? But Etsy's big, so they have to defend against these edge cases and they have to make sure that everyone has a good time, even if it's not uh, the best experience sometimes. Like, well, if my listing's good for three months, why would you not just keep it up there? Well, recency, they like it to keep it fresh. All right, so good strategy, you know, your listing's renewed yesterday. Bad strategy, your listing was renewed two months ago, right? So just 
keep an eye on that based on the keywords you're targeting. All right, and the fifth one, fifth and final, bottom of the page, category page. We get a lot of questions about this. What is a category page? Category page is when you do a search for something like silver. And instead of listings that you see right on the page, like with most searches, since it's a really broad search, right? Because there's so many things that can be made out of silver. Silver necklaces, silver rings, silver bracelets, right? They're going to sh literally show you as the shopper those categories in kind of big, big blocks in the, on the screen. And then beneath that, if you scroll down, which I don't expect a lot of people do. In fact, I know a lot of shoppers don't do that because um, why would you? It looks like what I have to do from here is choose one of the paths, right? Choose one of those categories. So if your listing is ranking on that broad search, the one with the category page, a lot of the shoppers don't even know it's down there because what they're doing is they're thinking like, oh no, I've got to pick another option. My options are, you know, silver necklaces, rings, or bracelets. I got to click on one of these. They don't even realize you scroll down and there's other options. So there's understanding Etsy SEO, a single page, lesson one, and of course, why Etsy SEO matters in the first place. See you in lesson two.